A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Fire! The faint flush of early dawn colored the eastern horizon, and twinkling beams of light found their way through the fluttering leaves of the cottonwoods to move in restless pattern over the slumbering forms of the Lone Ranger, his Indian companion Tonto, and the Lone Ranger's 14-year-old nephew, Dan Reed. It was only at long intervals that young Dan was permitted to travel with the masked man and the Indian, and boy-like, he slept contentedly and soundly under the open sky. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger awoke with a start as distant, harsh sounds intermingled with the chirping of the birds. Hello. Uh, here, Chief Sabe. What? What's the matter? Sounds like Indians attacking not far from here. Uh, that's not good. Here, Silver Scouts. We saddle up, Toto. Maybe we can help. Steady, Silver. Dan, you stay here in camp until we come back. Camp well hidden, Dan. You'll be safe here. Oh, why can't I go, too? I don't know what we're riding into, Dan. Steady, big fella. Now don't leave camp until we return. I won't. Uh, we not be too long, Dan. Let's go, Toto. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. May not hear anything now, Kimasabi. I'm sure we're going in the right direction, Toto. Look, Kimasabi. I'll fail to write. Smoke. My boy, faster. Get him up, Scout. Within a few minutes, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up before a scene of complete devastation. Oh, oh, sir. Oh, 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 the cabin's in smoldering ruins. Ah, look there, Kimasabi. Find the cabin. The bodies of two men. Said he, Silver. <laughs> Maybe one of them's still alive. Come on, Tonto. Ah. They didn't have a chance. Them dead? Both of them. Otto, these Indian arrows. Ah, uh, them Comanches who kill them. This is serious, Toto. The Comanches are starting a general uprising. Now it means war. Keep us happy. Someone's near. Listen. I'm over there in bushes. Might be a trick. Be ready with your gun. Uh. We'll investigate. Come on. Toto, it's a little Indian boy. He's hurt. You're not killed. You're not killed. We won't hurt you, boy. Look, 
Your arm is bleeding, Tato. You'd better fix it. Ah. Uma, Metima, Hui. Me, me, de, Lola, Tima, little bear. Him say, him name, little bear. Oh. Me fix arm. It's not much hurt, Kimasabi. Here, use this neckerchief. Ah. He spoke a few English words a moment ago, Tato. Me no word. Great Comanche chief, Red Eagle, father of little bear. Him tell little bear... Words of white man. Oh, oh me not hurt much, oh. little bear. Oh. Uh, yeah, that better. Little bear is very young to travel with Comanche braves on warpath. Comanche brave go to hunt. Little bear follow on pony. White man in cabin see brave on trail. Try kill. Comanche brave make war cry. Kill white men. So the men in the cabin provoked this raid, Tonto, by firing upon a hunting party. May be the cause of a general uprising at the Comanches. Ah. And what we do with little bear, Kimasabi? His pony is gone. We'll take him to his village. Oh, no. It's not good go near Comanche village now. We'll go only close enough for little bear to join the tribe on foot. Come, little bear. We'll take you to your father's village. <laughs> Little bear can easily go to Red Eagle's village from here. Uh, yeah, I'll lift you down. <laughs> there you are. Little bear, like white man with black cover on face. Like great white horse. Like Tonto. We like you too, little bear. Someday you'll grow up to be a friend to all white men. Other white men kill Comanche. Or Tom say, Comanche, go soon. Kill other white men. Little bear, go now. Join chief, my father. Ulate. Ulate. That incident at the cabin has really started something, Tonto. Ah, and little bear, right. And chief beat war drums. We'll have to do something. Ah, uh, what do we do? Now you stay here, watch developments. I'll go back to our camp and send Dan with a message to Fort Lancaster. I'll find out all you can and come to the camp. We'll go warn the ranchers in the valley beyond Eagle Pass. Me do it. Good. I'll meet you in camp. Be careful and adios. Adios, Kimasabi. Come on, Silver. Oh, oh Silver. Oh, steady, big fella. Easy. What happened? Steady, big fella. Indians, Dan. Comanches. They burned down a cabin and killed two white men who had fired on their hunting party. What? The men should have known better than to do that. They probably saw the Comanches riding near and became panicky. A foolish mistake may be the cause of a great deal more killing. What do you mean? Well, Dan, the Comanches are easily aroused. We were close to their village. They've already started beating the war drums. They'll wipe out every rancher and his family in the valley beyond Eagle Pass unless something can be done to stop them. What can be done? The only hope is to get the cavalry from Fort Lancaster, which is 20 miles up the Pecos River Trail. I... I hate to have you take the risk, Dan, but... Golly... You mean you want me to go to the fort? Yes, Dan. You think you can? Oh, sure. I'll find the way, all right. Victor will get me there in no time. The trail follows the river all the way, so you can't miss it. Here, show the commandant of the fort the silver bullet. Tell him to bring all the troops he has to Eagle Pass. Yes, sir. I'll get started right away. Be careful, Dan, and hurry as fast as you can. The lives of all the ranchers may depend on your success. <laughs> Mounted on his horse, Victor, Dan left the Lone Ranger's camp and headed for the river trail. He felt a thrill of pride that the Lone Ranger had trusted him with such an important mission. No thought of danger entered his mind, and he was determined to make every minute count. He continually urged his racing horse to even greater speed. Come on, Victor! Faster, boy! Faster! The brave horse responded gallantly and carried his light burden swiftly along the trail toward Fort Lancaster. Suddenly, Dan's great desire for speed in the direction of the fort died within him he saw a group of moving horsemen coming from a side trail ahead of him. He pulled Victor to a quick halt. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, boy, oh, oh. Oh, golly, Indians. If they're Comanches, though, they see us, Victor. Turn around, quick. Ah! Get up, Victor. Come on, boy. Run, Victor, run. We've got to make it to camp, Victor. Run. Run. <laughs> Some time later, when Tonto returned to camp, 
After having watched the activity in the village of the Comanches. Oh, scum, oh, fire, oh, oh, fella. Fire, he came, sorry. Fire. What did you find out, Toto? It looked plenty bad for ranchers. Comanches put on war paint. Like many signal fire. That means Red Eagle is out to start something on a large scale. Ah, uh, Comanche chiefs, plenty angry. Whole big council of war. Me get close. Here, Chief Red Eagle. Give heap big talk. Comanche must not break treaty of peace. Comanche smoke peace pipe, not break treaty. White man kill. Comanche brave who hunt. White man break treaty. <laughs> Signal fires bring many more Comanche to village of Red Eagle. Soon many Comanche braves seek out ranchers in valley. Soon white ranchers not be in valley no more. Soon Comanche hunting valley in peace. Hula, <laughs> hula. Comanches go to valley, kill, burn, and white men not come back to valley. <laughs> when many Comanche have gathered, and Comanche braves move against white men, Red Eagle has spoken. Hula mato. <laughs> large band of braves. Red Eagle could very easily wipe out everyone in the valley, Tonto. Ah. Dan's gone to Fort Lancaster for troops. Oh. Dan go to Fort alone? Yes, I, I hated to send him. We'll be needed here. Ah. Ranchers need plenty help against Comanche. I know. Here, Silver. Easy. Steady, boy. We'll ride through Eagle Pass to the valley and warn the ranchers. I have a plan that may keep the Comanches back until the troops arrive from Fort Lancaster. If we can do that. What's come? You sound like Victor. Victor? But by now, Dan must be almost to the fort. Look, Kimasabi. Victor, come with empty saddles. Steady, Silver. Oh, Victor. Whoa, steady. Easy, Tuttle. Whoa. Quiet, Victor. How do I? Tuttle. Look here. What you find? An arrow. Comanche arrow. Stuck in the cantle of the saddle. Ah. Comanche come at Dan from behind. Yes. Steady, big fella. Easy, Silver. We'll follow the trail Dan took. Tonto, I... I don't know what to think. It not look good, Kimasabi. But maybe Dan not get hurt. I hope not. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Where Dan turned Victor back on trail. Dan had fallen off. We would have found him before this, Tonto. We followed trail back, huh? All right. Come on, boy. Come, Scout. Come, fella. Come. Keep a sharp lookout, Tonto. Both sides of the trail. He might have rolled off into the bushes. Ah. Uh, I shouldn't have sent him to the fort. We find him and he's. Well, he was hurt. Wait, Kim, let's have it. Silver, Scout. Oh, fella. Steady. Oh, fella. Oh. Here. Horses stop. Yes. Victor's hoof prints go to. Back a long trail. Other horses turn off to side. Maybe go to a village, a red eagle. Toto, you think they've taken Dan prisoner? Ah. We go to a village to try to get Dan? Toto, I... Well, if we do that, we won't have time to warn the ranchers. Or to get the troops. Oh, no, that's right. But Dan, him... Comanche not good to prisoners. So I realize that. And what we do, Kimasabi? Toto, if we don't warn the ranchers and get the troopers, there'll be a massacre in the valley. We don't do what we can to save Dan now. It may be too late in a short time. This is the hardest decision I've ever had to make. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. Tonto sat stoically watching and waiting as the Lone Ranger, torn between his affection for his young nephew, Dan Reed, and his duty to the ranchers, paused a moment before making his decision. Then the masked man spoke quietly. Tonto, our duty is plain. I'll ride to warn the ranchers and help with the plans against the Indians. We go to Fort Lancaster for the troopers. Ah, uh, me leave for Fort now. All right, then hurry, Toto, hurry. Me hurry. Adios, Kimasabi. Adios, Kimasabi. Get him up, scout. Those devils touch one hair of your head, Dan. I'll... On, Silver! Having come to a decision, the masked rider of the plains exerted all his efforts toward accomplishing what he had decided to do. Racing against time, he rode his fleet-footed white stallion through Eagle Pass, a long, high-walled canyon forming the only entrance to the valley beyond. Once in the valley, the Lone Ranger went from ranch to ranch, giving to each the same message. Oh, who's the hey. Steady, big fella. Now gather your men together and have them drive your cattle to the valley end of Eagle Pass. The Comanches are on the war path. It's a matter of life and death. One silver! Finally, the last and largest ranch was reached, and the Lone Ranger drew rein. Oh, oh, Silver! Hold up! Oh, that's the stallions! And the big hombre! Hey, he's masked! Somebody get Bill Morris! Ah, right, here comes Bill now! Hey, who in tarnation are you? What's the idea of riding into my ranch yard like he was being chased by the devil? Who are you? I'm Bill Morris, owner of this spread known as the Bar M. Now, I... oh, wait, see here. I'm the one who asked for your name. You got me telling you mine. Names don't matter right now, Morris. I came to warn you that the Comanches are uprising. They plan to hit the ranchers in this valley first. Now, uh, hold on, hold on, stranger. How do we know you speak the truth about them Comanches? You don't know right now. But if you want to take a chance and wait for proof, go ahead. Well, blame if I ain't inclined to think you are telling the truth. Believe it or not, that's up to you, Morris. Now, look here, stranger. It's a right worrisome bit of news you brought. If those Comanches are coming here on the warpath, we ain't got much of a chance. Now listen to me, all of you. All the other ranchers in this valley are meeting at Eagle Pass. And they're driving what cattle they can round up to the same place. Uh, what are the cattle for? I've sent someone to Fort Lancaster for the troopers. We can haul off the Comanches long enough to let the troopers get there. You and your ranchers will be saved. Yeah, that's right. But how? The whole plan will be explained to everyone after you reach the pass. Now don't delay, men. Start there at once with every available man and steer. I'll be waiting there to tell you our plan. Hurry. Come on, boy. Come Silver. Later, at the valley entrance to Eagle Pass... The Lone Ranger watched as more and more ranchers arrived, driving cattle before them. Eagle Pass was a narrow, canyon-like passage, about an eighth of a mile long, running through a cliff-lined mountain range just east of the Pecos River. When the ranchers had gathered at the appointed place, the Lone Ranger rode to a vantage point to tell them his plan. Men! Men! You've all come here for one purpose. To hold back the Comanches until the troopers arrive. That way, save your families and your homes. That's what we're here for, stranger. Well, the time is short. Lookouts have been posted high on the side of the canyon walls to signal us when the Indians approach the entrance to the pass. Now, we are greatly outnumbered, so our one hope is to keep them from coming through until help arrives. That's why I asked for cattle. Now, quiet, quiet, everybody. Listen to the masked man's plan. Some of you will lose your cattle. But that's better than losing your homes or your lives. <laughs> The plan is simple. When the Comanches are sighted, the lookout will fire two shots as a signal. When you hear that signal, drive the cattle into the pass. Then when the Indians start into the pass on the other side, a single shot will be fired. That's your signal to start shooting into the air behind the cattle so that they'll stampede through the pass toward the Comanches. The stampeding cattle will rout the Indians. 
They won't have a chance to band together again before the troopers get here. Now remember, don't start the stampede until the single shot is fired. All right, everybody, let's start moving the cattle toward the pass. If we don't hold those redskins off, we're all done for. So do just what the stranger said. Now let's get busy. When everything was in readiness, the Lone Ranger with Bill Morris rode partway into Eagle Pass to a cleft in one of the side walls big enough to shield their horses and themselves. From this point, they could watch the effect of their plan when it would be put into action. Stranger, with those redskins not knowing we're ready for them, they're going to get a mighty big surprise when they meet up with those stampede and cattle. That's a general idea, Bill. Valley ranchers sure appreciate all you're doing. Guess we'll all do more appreciating when we realize what it would mean to lose one of our loved ones. Yes, I know how much such a loss can mean to a person. The first signal. The Indians have been sighted. I hope those ranchers do things right. I hear them driving the cattle into the entrance to the pass now. Good thing this big crack is here in the wall. Or we'd be swept along when those cattle are stampeded. Steady, Silver. A slight bend in the canyon prevents us from seeing the other end. Yeah, but it keeps the Indians from seeing those cattle, too. That's right, I... They've entered the pass. That's the second signal. The boys have started the cattle. Be stampeding in a minute. There they come. They're stampeding now. Those savages think that ranchers are coming at them, so they're ready to fight. I jump on G horse fat. Look, two kids running straight into those cattle. Dan and Little Bear. What's that? They'll be crushed in the stampede. Come on, Little Bear. Instinctively, the Lone Ranger urged the great-hearted Silver forward without stopping to reason why. The one thought in the mind of the masked man was that somehow Dan was alive. Alive, but now in danger of a worse death than he would have at the hands of the Comanches. Besides Dan, on a short-legged Indian pony, rode Little Bear. The Lone Ranger cried a warning to them. Dan! Little Bear! Turn! Go back! The boys heard. They wheeled and started back. Quickly, Silver's magnificent stride closed the gap between them and the Lone Ranger. Little Bear's pony stumbled and fell. Keep going, Dan. To that hole in the wall to the left. Keep going. Easy, Silver. Steady, boy. As the fast galloping Silver approached the small, still body of Little Bear, the Ranger leaned forward into the side. Then, grasping the pommel of the saddle with one hand, he made a sudden downward movement. I've got you! Sweeping the form of Little Bear into his free arm and lifting the boy to the saddle. Now run, Silver! Run! With even more effort and speed, the big stallion leaped forward, heading toward the hole in the left wall where Dan had gone. Just a little further, Silver! Just a little further! Whoa! Whoa, boy! Whoa! Whoa! Steady now! Ben, you all right? Yes, sir. His little bear... He'll be all right. The troopers have come. Yes. The ranchers are safe now. Come on. We'll go meet Tato. Return little bear to his people. She's not bother ranchers now, Captain Bradley. Well, I don't know whether we take credit for that or not, Tonto. I never saw anything like the way those Indians rushed out of that pass before that stampeding herd. <laughs> I guess some of them are still going. <laughs> That's right, Lieutenant. Oh, 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 hold on. Oh. Howdy, Captain. My name's Bill Morris. Owner spread over in the valley. You're glad to meet you, Mr. Morris. I'm telling you, I just witnessed the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. A masked stranger who came to help us saved two boys in the stampede. In fact, he grabbed a little Indian boy almost from under the cattle's hooves. You say two boys? Yep. The other one was a white lad, riding a fine white horse. Oh, uh, then Ranger, fine Dan. Uh, the boy you told us about? Uh. Hey, look. There comes a masked man now. Oh, 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 oh,
Hi, Dan. Hi, hello, Captain. Hello, hello Tonto. Uh, Golly, it's good to see you. How do you get here, Dan? A band of Comanches took me prisoners. They they kept me tied up in a wigwam. Little Bear came to visit me, and he was playing with a silver bullet. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> me see him take bullet from gun belt this morning, Kimazabi. <laughs> yes, I know, Tonto. I told him I had a silver bullet, too. He found it in my pocket, and I told him I was your friend. Little Bear untied me, and we sneaked away. Went to our camp where I got Victor. Then we rode, rode to warn you, warn you where the uh, that the Comanches were coming. I'm glad you're back and safe, Dan. Him friend of Little Bear. Man with black cover on face, friend of Little Bear. We tell Chief Red Eagle, my father, not hurt friend. Not hurt white man. That's a fine spirit to grow up with, Little Bear. Hey, yonder comes a small group of Comanches carrying a piece of white cloth. Oh, Chief, my father come. I'll put you down now, Little Bear. Red Eagle. Wow. Me, Chief Red Eagle. How, Chief Red Eagle? Me, how te amano? No te amule. Uh, Red Eagle, see how masked men who ride flying horse catch little bear. Save life. Never will Comanche attack white men in valley. Comanche smoke pipe of peace like little bear say. Red Eagle has spoken. Captain, looks like you can take your troopers back to Fort Lancaster. That masked man sure seemed to have gotten everything under control by himself. Well, he's gone. Would to heaven we had more like him in the West, Mr. Morse. You talk like you know who he is. I do. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Little Bear, always be friend to Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.